Shalom. First and foremost, Kahalol Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai Ba'ashim, Rechah Kadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of the Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, salutations go unto the hopeful elect, Tabernacle of David, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Once again, it's your brother Azar Rayah, back again with another lesson in the spirit of prophecy, which is the testimony of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. So here I have this video lined up, and uh, as you can see, the title, The Prophecy of Euphrates River, Drying Up is Happening Now, 2022. And this was posted by uh, the a and uh, news page. And uh, really, the River Euphrates has been drying up for about 20-something years now. But now it's gotten to the point where it's actually dry. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 the River Euphrates is now actually almost completely dry. All right, And we know according to prophecy that once we see this, this is to make way for the kings of the east to do battle. All right. Ultimately, for World War Three to go down. All right. We've been seeing all these geopolitical tensions going on between different nations, Russia, uh, <clears throat> you know, NATO, you know, China, Taiwan, you know, all these nations having having beef pretty much, you know, but all of this is leading up to World War Three. You're going to see these things, but the end is not yet. OK, so uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to play this video here. And um, we're going to pull some precepts. So let's check this out. From satellite image, it shows clearly that the Euphrates River is extremely drying up. The Euphrates River is the longest and the most important river in the Middle East. Originating in Turkey, the Euphrates flows through Syria and Iraq to join the Tigris in the Shat al Arab. With and real quick, just to, you know, emphasize something here. You see how. This river here pretty much separates the east and, and the west. Because here it is, you have the Euphrates, you have the Tigris River running alongside it. All right, but you can see the extent of the Euphrates River. All right, and this is what they, uh, in this region here, this is what um, in ancient times was referred to as the Fertile Crescent. All right, up in here, the Euphrates, the Tigris River, you know, this is a very fertile land valley here all right but you can see the extent of the euphrates river stretching from the persian gulf all the way up into turkey all right all the way up into iran going out to the caspian sea okay so this is a major river you know that that you know separates you know the these nations syria iraq iran turkey all right which these are major players the well these are going to be major players in in uh, world war three because right, these are some of the nations that Russia is guarding, you see. So once NATO kicks off, uh, you know, war tensions with, with uh, Russia, or he might attack some, some of these first. You know, NATO might go for some of these nations first. And then, of course, Russia, China, North Korea, these eastern nations will have to respond. Okay, hence why I say it's a prophecy. Well, matter of fact, let's just get it real quick. All right, that's what Revelation... Uh, I believe that's Revelation 16. Let's get that real quick. Yeah, Revelation 16, 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Okay, so this is ultimately being set up by the Most High for the way of World War Three. So that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared because over in this region, this is pretty much a hotbed for, uh, you know, these for where World War Three is really going to kick off. Okay, You're going to have all type of tanks, you know, aircraft carriers, all kind of, you know, troops going through this area. OK, looking to make war with uh, NATO, with these, uh, you know, Western Western nations, man. All right. So the way of the kings of the east is being prepared by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, these things are all happening for the sake of prophecy to come forth. And this is how you know that we are almost out of here. Okay, we are in the very, very latter end of prophecy. There's there's not really that many prophecies left until the Lord comes back. All we're really waiting on right now is World War Three. Well, before World War Three, the MOTB has to come. You know, the mark has to come, first and foremost, then after that then shortly after that world war three 
will follow. Then the Lord is going to come in the midst of World War Three. All right. So let's get back to the video. Which, Which empties, empties into, into the, the Persian, Persian Gulf. Gulf. Since the last two decades, the Euphrates is continuously drying up. Strangled by the water policies of Iraq's neighbors, Turkey and Syria, three years severe drought, and years of misuse by Iraq and its farmers, the river is significantly smaller than it was just a few years ago. Some officials worry that it could soon be a country with no river. The shrinking of the Euphrates, a river so crucial to the birth of civilization that the Book of Revelation prophesied its drying up as a sign of the end times, has decimated farms along its banks, has left fishermen impoverished and has depleted riverside towns as farmers flee to the cities looking for work. Though it once was susceptible to regional flooding, numerous dams have been built along the Euphrates in the past 50 years which now regulate its water flow. The drying up of Euphrates, Syria's longest river is raising concerns as the demise of the water body could lead to a humanitarian disaster in the country. Iraq is battling its worst drought in decades. Lack of rainfall and poor resource management has left communities that depend on the Tigris and Euphrates. So really a number of things are going to come from this Euphrates River drying up. Because you're going to have, you know, massive famine going on throughout this land, throughout the world. Okay, because over there in this region, the, you know, the, like I said, this is a very fertile region in which, you know, a lot of crops are produced for the world market. So with the Euphrates River gone, you know, with all of that fertile soil, with the, you know, with the waters of the Euphrates not, you know, uh, irrigating the crops in that region, that's going to lead to a major famine, all right? It's going to lead to, you know, uh, you know, widespread hunger, power outages, all right? A whole, you know, a whole slew of things are going to come just from this. But ultimately, the most important thing is World War Three. all right? That's what you have to look forward to according to biblical prophecy, that World War Three is going to come ultimately from this. Because once this this river is completely dried up, which is pretty much almost there. You know, like I remember doing videos uh, years ago on this same very topic because, you know, they, they just showed it in 2002 how low the water level was. So really for the past 20, 25 years, the river has been drying up slowly, slowly, you know. But <clears throat> today in 2022, it's gotten to the point now where it's almost completely dry. So once it is and it looks like this, you know, that's that's going to be a, uh, a uh, you know, travel way for these, you know, Eastern militaries, for the Russian military, the Chinese military, India, Iraq, Iran, Syria. All right. All of these nations are going to be gathered together in this region to fight and do battle. OK, ultimately, the commencement of World War Three, man. So. You know, you could just look at world events and see the time that we're living in. That you know that these are very, uh, you know, perilous times that's coming upon the earth. All right, number one, you have people in the earth that you know they're just in this spirit of, you know, pretty much the days of Noah. You know, the average person out here is, you know, in that mindset of, <clears throat> you know, trying to make it in this world. You know, trying to, you know, live their best life, get that bag you know, not, you know, concerned, not concerned about what's going on. Really, things like this, prophecy, they not concerned with this. You know, they just caught up in the cares of this life. And that's why the day of the Lord is going to come upon the wicked, those that don't watch as a thief in the night, because you're not paying attention to stuff like this. All right. It says in Second Ezra, uh, the 16th chapter, roughly paraphrasing, you know, because victory will shop be so good cheap upon earth, you know, basically that people are not going to be paying attention. But even then shall evils grow. All right. So they, you know, while you're not paying attention, while you're trying to live your best life, travel, you know, go uh, protest for abortion, you know, women's rights and things of that nature. These, these are the real things that's happening. But Esau got you distracted with. Real Housewives of Atlanta, the Kardashians, all kinds of other nonsense and folly just to take your attention away from what's really going on. All right. So hey, the Lord has a, a, a very, very, uh, you know, slick trap 
except for these people. Right? These people are gonna get caught up in their own snare. Euphrates rivers devoid of the water they need to survive. In Islam, some of the hadiths of the Prophet Muhammad suggest that the Euphrates will dry up, revealing unknown treasures that will be the cause of strife and war. And ain't no damn Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> ain't no damn Prophet Muhammad came up with that prophecy, man. Muhammad was not a prophet. Muhammad, you see, when you go into the Quran, when you go into the Quran, the prophecies that, that are there, they were taken from the Holy Scriptures because you have to understand going back into the history that the scriptures were around long before Muhammad even came on the scene. You see, the Quran came after the Holy Scriptures. But, uh, <coughs> Salakia, um, Muhammad was actually taught by uh, the Israelites. I forget the name of the Israelite that he was personally taught by. But yes, indeed, uh, Muhammad was indeed taught by the Israelites, and the, and the Muslims know this. See, but they just want to have their, their own piece of the pie, their own piece of prophecy, which really the Quran contains no prophecy. And the prophecies that you do find in there, the ones that are, you know, somewhat accurate, they line up exactly with what the Bible says. But which one came before? The Holy Scriptures. <clears throat> you see? So, no, nah, you know, it, it ain't no damn Prophet Muhammad, you know, prophesied the river Euphrates drying up. That 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 was already prophesied and decreed before Muhammad even started walking, man. All right, just to set that straight, but let's continue. The drying up of Euphrates River also raised concern among Christian community. In the Holy Bible, Revelation chapter 16 verse 12 says, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. The drying up of Middle East is not a prophecy anymore. It is not a prediction. It is a fact that is happening. Five largest lakes in the Middle East are already drying up. Rising temperature and mismanagement are contributing to water insecurity and could lead to environmental crises. So this is indeed the end. You know, the things that we've been speaking about through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, these things are a reality. <clears throat> All right, these things are a reality. Okay. Now, we, we often say that this place don't have that much longer to go. For me personally, I can't see Esau being in rulership for another five years. If Esau being rulership, be in rulership for another five years, I'll, I will be shocked. <laughs> All right, I'll just say it plainly. If this man is still in rulership and the earth is still going on five years from now, I will be shocked. I will actually be surprised. You know, but I, I don't see it going on that, that much longer, man. All right, because, you know, this this man is already, uh you know, flexing that, that MOTB. Tensions are rising between the nations. You, can, you know what I'm saying? You got skirmishes going on right now. You got wars and rumors of wars going on. But really, once he once he put that MOTB down, really, it's it. It's up. Because shortly after that, World War Three is going to pop off, and the Lord is going to come in the midst of that. So, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man, if you can't get it now, <laughs> you know, I, I, mean, I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. It's, you know, either the Lord has just blinded you or... You just have a reprobate spirit on you. I mean, I, I don't know, man. But if you can't see what times we're in, the time that, you know, this is the time that you need to get right to turn back unto the Heavenly Father, then you're going to get caught up in these judgments. All right? Straight up. So now, uh, let's, let's, let's get this. Let's jump to uh, Matthew. Let's get a classic scripture. Matthew 24, you already know what I'm going to. Verse 6, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. 
and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. All right, so our Lord Yahweh Shah told us the things to look for in the last days before he make his return. That you will see these things, but what? The end is not yet. All right, so because World War Three is about to pop off, you know that the end is not yet because there, there's still other prophecies that must come to pass before World War Three ultimately pops off. The main one being the MOTB. Okay, you already see how degenerate that the people in the world are. You know, people are literally out here having nude, <clears throat> you know, having a uh, nude pride parades with children watching. So that alone should show you how degenerate and how, uh, you know, how much the world has morally decayed, especially Babylon the Great. So if that's not an indicator that we're in the last days, that we are at the very end of prophecy and the kingdom is about to be restored to the Israelites, then you need to, you know, have your spiritual understanding, your spiritual antenna set up because, you know, you ain't got it if you can't see that. All right. So, uh. I'm going to jump into this article here real quick. Okay, because NATO, NATO been flexing this muscle, been talking that big talk against Russia. All right, so this is a uh, title here. It says, NATO War Summit. Germany commits tens of thousands of soldiers, combat aircraft, and ships in the deployment against Russia. All right, so NATO, and, I, and uh, they, they just added two countries to the, to the NATO alliance. What is it? I believe it's Finland and uh, Sweden, but were just added to uh, NATO. All right, so they have added <laughs> nations to their arsenal, you see? And they're committing troops already to go and, and fight against Russia. So, hey, the Most High is turning things up. Okay, that's that's what, uh, you know, the Apostle Tahar labeled 2022, the year of the Most High turning up. And indeed, the Most High is turning up, man. All right, the Most High is turning up the heat. In world prophecy okay now we're going back to Matthew 24 what, what, what does it say for nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places all right and Salakia for my voice <clears throat> you know if I'm you know kind of kind of hoarse you know I haven't been feeling well these past couple days but you know we still gonna get this word out so as it says here Okay, you're going to see nation rising against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Okay, so, hey, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, man. All right, so reading it says, the day two NATO summit in Madrid, which ended yesterday, was dominated by the military alliance's preparations for war against the nuclear powers, Russia and China. NATO's new strategic concept describes Russia as the most significant and direct threat to allies security and to peace and stability in the Euro-Atlantic area. NATO cannot consider the Russian Federation to be our partner and will significantly strengthen deterrence and defense for all allies. All right, so NATO is basically saying, look, we, you know, we strong, all right? We're not going to allow Russia and China to bully us <clears throat> all right because you've been seeing russia flexing and even going back years ago you know some some you know years a hey, russia was russia and china north korea they was doing war games man i believe even up to 2020 russia was uh you know having uh war games they wasn't doing them war games you know just, just for fun you know what i'm saying they was doing them war games to flex their muscle to to show the nations like yo listen we coming with some heavy artillery and y'all better get ready to deal with it. Because once World War Three pops off, we hey, we going no holes barred. We ain't taking no prisoners. It's on. All right. So Russia, been, Russia, China, North Korea, them, them Eastern nations, man, they've been flexing their muscle for years now. And really, NATO was scared. All right. Why, why you think they just added two new nations to, to uh, NATO? Because really, to you know, keep it real, Russia and China alone, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, could, could take out NATO. NATO is not a very, uh, you know, strong military force. You know, that's why they're backed by America. 
okay because america is pretty much the you know the most dominant uh you know well i'm not gonna say the most but one of you know america is is up there with china and russia even though the russian military and the china military is pretty much no comparison compared to america like you look at how these russians and chinese train is is it's like night and day compared to american soldiers you know what i'm saying you got them more by some chinese over there breaking breaking you, you know 50 pound blocks on their damn heads with sledgehammers man you know what i'm saying you got russians you know out there in the siberian wilderness <laughs> you know with no shirt on sometimes even butt naked man Just, you know taking apart the rifle putting the rifle back together putting they 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 hands and you know freezing cold water and shooting down 10 targets like it's nothing so the, so the training that these you know Russia and China has compared to these nations here is scary <laughs> okay hence why they got to add nations to their arsenal you see <clears throat> it says for the first time in NATO's history the alliance also has China in its crosshairs the newly adopted NATO strategy speaks of malicious hybrid and cyber operations, disinformation and confrontational rhetoric, among other things. It therefore plans to address the systematic challenges posed by the PRC to Euro-Atlantic security and ensure NATO's enduring ability to guarantee the defense and security of allies. <clears throat> says the cynicism is breathtaking. In fact, it is the NATO powers and their imperial imperialist allies in the South Pacific, including Japan and Australia, both of which were represented in Madrid, who are the aggressors in world politics. <laughs> All right. So listen, basically, man, NATO is prepared for the inevitable or, or I, I should say that they're trying to prepare for the inevitable because, you know, the most high has it on these nations spirit that they need to go to world war three he has it on their spirit that world war three must happen okay so this is why these things are happening all right so that shows you who's really in, who's really in control all right the most high is in control the most high is putting the spirit onto these world leaders to buck up against each other to to, to rise up against each other for sake of what for sake of prophecy, for sake of World War Three, so that the words of the Heavenly Father may come to pass, man. Now let's get this uh, scripture, <clears throat> Joel three and two. All right, because hey, the Lord must rid the host of the battle, man. All right, the Lord is the one that's you know moving these these chess pieces on the board. Okay, so it says, well, let's start at verse one. For behold, in those days and in that time. When I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat or Yahweh Shapat, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Okay? So, hey, the Lord is the one that's gathering these nations he said i will also gather all nations and bring them down so hey the lord is the one that put the spirit onto these world leaders to bring them down to battle all right the lord is the one that's setting up these chess pieces man for ultimately prophecy to come to pass and it, listen there is no stopping it and this is what we tell you through the spirit and power of yahweh that there is no stopping the inevitable there's no stopping prophecy it doesn't matter if you don't believe it doesn't matter if you believe that the Bible is a book of fairy tales. These things will still come to pass. The words, because the words of the Heavenly Father and His one and only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, are indeed faithful and true. So for what if some did not believe? Shall that make the faith of Yahweh to, to none effect? And the answer is no. You cannot believe all you want, but these things still going to happen. All right? You can buck up against the Bible. You can curse the Bible all you want, but guess what? Prophecy will still come to pass and your ass will still get judged if you don't repent. All right. <clears throat> now let's go ahead and get a uh, Isaiah 13 and 4. All 
Isaiah 13 and 4. Well, yeah, Isaiah 13 and 4. The noise of a multitude in the mountains like as of a great people. A tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. Now, what's that? World War Three. A tumultuous noise. All, all those, uh, you know, bombs being dropped. Okay, all those, uh, you know, um, artillery being fired, tanks firing off. Okay, high-powered high uh, military rifles being fired, man. A tumultuous noise. Okay, the Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. So who is mustering these nations together, man? The Lord of hosts, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, mustereth the host of the battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. So in the midst of World War Three, the Lord is going to come with the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land, to destroy the enemies, okay, to destroy the enemies of, of, his, of uh, Israel, all right? How ye for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction for the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Do you hear what the scriptures are saying? <laughs> okay, like, do, do you see the indignation of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai? This is what's coming. Okay, and people take this for a joke. But you can see world events going on in the earth that the words of the Heavenly Father are indeed faithful and true. And these things will come to pass. All right? Then that's why we as the men of the Lord, that's why we do what we do. And we know that... You know, this is no time to get complacent. This is no time to, uh, you know, take the hand off the plow. All right. We must continue to prophesy till we can't prophesy no more because this is what the Lord has the spirit on us to do. OK. The scriptures say that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. So, yeah, war is coming. Yeah, famine is coming. Pestilence is here and will get worse. OK, that, you know, there's. There, there's going to come a time where things are going to get very uncomfortable, even for the men of the Lord. But guess what? We have the wisdom and knowledge to stabilize us in these times. All right. Ultimately. Because while people don't have food to eat, all right, while people don't have, you know, clean water to 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 drink. OK, all the things you take for granted now, the, these things are about to go away very soon. And people going to be bugging out. People going to be killing each other. People are already killing each other. So how much more so in, in, you know, the day of judgment, man? But we know the truth, okay? The Lord said that my servants shall eat. The Lord going to take care of his servants, man. And that's why we have this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to keep us stable, to keep us grounded. Because, the, you know, reading prophecy, this, this don't bother us. Because we know that these things must come to pass. But it's not for our destruction because we're trying to be on the right side. Of judgment, you know what I'm saying. We trying to be called up into them chariots and watch the judgment go down. We're not trying to be judged with the wicked. You know, Lord willing, we you know we be those men. You know, we be of that. You know, hopefully, like number to escape the trying times coming upon the earth. Lord willing, you know. But you know that's that's why we uh you know <clears throat> you know rehearse the righteous acts. You know to make our calling and election sure. That's why we do the work. You know, ultimately for salvation. Because I don't care who you are. In that day when, you know, when the ish hit the fan, you're going to desire salvation above everything. You're going to be calling out <laughs> to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. All right? <clears throat> it's this last video here. I'm going to watch a little bit of this and then close it out. Tonight, responding to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, involving more than 100,000 Russian troops, NATO is set to put a force of 300,000 on high alert. An unprecedented escalation, seven times the current number. As a Roman general once said, if you want peace, prepare for war. This constitutes the biggest overhaul of our collective defense and deterrence 
since the Cold War. But the West's response to Ukraine has Russia reacting, a kind of geopolitical tit for tat. NATO member Lithuania, now openly threatened by the Kremlin for enforcing sanctions on supplies to a Russian enclave, Kaliningrad. Is your view that the best form of defence is offence? We are not offensive country. We don't want to attack anybody. But of course, we understand very much those threats which are coming. And probably nobody could understand. And like I said, man, he said, he said we're a defensive country. We don't want to attack anybody, but we understand the threat. So he, so he, he's pretty much like, listen, at this point, we got to do what we got to do. We don't want to, but the Lord got a spirit on him to get into this. You see? Because if it was up to Esau, he, you know, listen, Esau wouldn't even entertain World War Three because he understands that at the point technology has progressed now, that World War Three is going to ultimately destroy his kingdom. All right, that you know, this is going to be the end of his kingdom. And he understands that. But they can't help it because the Lord is the one that's controlling, <laughs> you know, the movie, man. Esau don't have no power. <clears throat> All right. The Lord ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth unto him whoever so he will. Even the basest of men, which is here Esau, the basest of all men, man. So the Most High set this devil up to rule over the planet Earth. So just like the Most High set him up, he's going to take him down. And it ain't nothing that he can do about it. Stand the threats from Russia better than me. Is this a fight for democracy? It is uh, the fight for democracy. And this is not the fight what is happening now in Ukraine. This is not the fight uh, of one uh, country against other country. We have to stop uh, Vladimir Putin and Russia in Ukraine. Otherwise, there will be continuation of this aggression. The U.S. has a lot invested in this tent standoff. A hundred thousand American troops are stationed in Europe, preparing for a shift in posture. This week, leaders, including President Biden, meeting in the Spanish capital, will update NATO's strategy, called the strategic concept. The last one described Russia as a potential partner. This time it will say explicitly, Russia is a threat. An unmistakable message from here in Madrid to Moscow. Moscow. <clears throat> so, hey, prepare for World War Three. All right, prepare for the MOTB. Prepare for the end. Get yourself right with Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Turn back to the Heavenly Father. Abstain from evil. That you may be counted worthy to be of that saved uh, precious elk, that hopeful lumber, man. So, I'm going to go ahead and end it right there. Uh, call hello Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah Bashim Rachakadash. Till next time, Shalom to the elect, DTA, Ababa Ball. Shalom.